Hello everyone, it is WeSee here with a follow-up on my original Anvil Editor video. Now, in the original video, I went over things a bit lightly because the video was getting very long and I wanted to release the tool already. Plus, I kind of assumed that anyone using the tool was already familiar with how to use game type mods. But, as the tool has gotten way more popular than I was expecting, I've decided to go ahead and give a more detailed explanation in this video. Now, before I do that, I have a few things to say. First of all, I have to thank everyone who has watched the original video and who has used the tool since its release. I was not expecting it to be this popular. I also want to announce that I'm releasing Anvil Editor 1.05, and as of the making of this video, it's actually already released. But I'm going to go over the changelog in this video before talking about the explanation. First, I want to go over the changes made to scale. For scale, I fix issues where clients were not consistently seeing scaled up objects properly, especially in the custom games browser, and especially if they join later in progress. So now, everyone in the lobby should see the same scale. I also made a change to the shadow caster option on scale, where green team by default now spawns a heavy barrier as opposed to a warthog turret on maps that support a heavy barrier. The reason for this change is because Warthog turrets have this annoying glitch with their interaction bubble. This glitch makes it impossible sometimes for clients to pick up other weapons or get in other vehicles due to the lack of a string prompt. For maps which do not support a heavy barrier, the Warthog turret is still used, but the heavy barrier is present on maps such as Forge World and Tempest, and even Breakpoint. Additionally, the Shadowcaster option with the spawner label, Spawn Sequence Negative 5, is going to be deprecated in the near future. It's already been taken out of the tool itself, but the game types still technically support it. However, due to the fact that you can just use scale with Spawn Sequence 0 to get normal scale, the option is redundant. One very important change to scale is that I'm now using a new 47x scale, as opposed to the 33x scale that I was using prior. Now, I understand this is very frustrating to some of you, and yes, the Anvil game types do use the 47x version now, but, as an added bonus, there's now a new scale option in the toolbar that lets you switch between 47x, 33x, which was the old scale, and Rabid Magic Man 71x scale, which is used for certain game types as well. Now, the reason why I switched to 47x is a little bit complicated. See, both 33x and 47x were made by Trusty Snooze, and Trusty was unsatisfied with his 33x scale. As shown by this graph here, the scaling doesn't exactly connect. From 100 to negative 100, there's a sudden giant leap, and if we're going by scaling factor alone, negative 11 is supposed to come after 100, which doesn't make any sense. So, Trusty wanted to update the scaling to this new 47x version, which as you can see, flows very nicely from 100 to negative 100. Now, I was on board with the idea, but we had very little time to actually implement it. See, on the Anvil server for several months now, there's been this event where people are making invasion maps and testing them with this new invasion game type, and hopefully, all of them are going to be going into matchmaking sooner or later. This invasion game type uses the 33x scaling, and Trusty was worried that when it went to matchmaking, 33x would be solidified as the de facto standard scaling. So, with some support from Abel Sir Thomas, Trusty and I went through, changed the scaling to the 47x version, and we also had to convert some maps to the new scaling as well. In order to do this in quick time, I made a branch of my tool for converting scale. Now, you're probably asking, Hey we see, can we get this branch for ourselves as well? And the answer is no. Mainly because it is very jank. The game assumes when the round starts that all scale objects below negative 11 have to be converted. So if you only do some conversions and then end the game or start a new round, the game doesn't remember which objects were converted and so assumes that they all need to be converted. On top of that, the waypoints can overload and break other waypoints, especially on the toolbar. Like I said though, the tool right now supports three different scaling methods, which you can toggle in the toolbar, so you can use that to kind of convert between the three methods if desired. Back on topic though, 
The two of us only had about two days to do all this, but we managed to get everything done in about a day. After this, I converted the scaling to the 47x version and announced it to the server that 1.05 was released. However, the conversion pissed pretty much everyone off, and so I hastily put together the conversion between the three scales, which I released as 1.05b. This is why if you look on the Nexus Mods page, there's 1.05a and 1.05b. 1.05b only affects the Forge tool itself, however, and none of the game types. Back on the topic of bug fixes, I didn't just bug fix scale, I also bug fixed object by index. For object by index, I had to completely rewrite the code in order to address networking issues where clients would not consistently see the map objects, and so now, clients should be able to see the objects every single time without fail. I have tested this in multiple lobbies with 12 to 16 people, and as far as I can tell, no one has had any issues. I'm still working on a way to return the deprecated features to allow the map objects to stay attached to their base objects throughout the game, as well as have shadow casters on them, so I'm not done with object by index yet. In addition, I want to introduce a new label which should hopefully fix some of the issues that object by index presents, although it can't do everything that object by index can do. Finally, there's been some minor updates to the forge tool itself. For the scale zone, I fixed the issue where the hill marker itself would scale down and become unusable. Additionally, I have now applied waypoints to scale down objects when you're in forge mode. This is a bit of an experimental feature, and it doesn't work exactly how I want it to, so I may remove or replace it at some point. For object by index, I've done an update that should hopefully satisfy at least some of you guys who run forge in multiplayer. I've made it so that clients can now see map object changes, but the process of doing this is a bit complicated, so allow me to explain. See, I found out that the local initial trigger does actually work in Forge, so we can run code on local for a single tick at the very start of a round. For some reason, this doesn't trigger during round 1, but it does trigger during round 2 and onward. Now, in round 2 onward, if a map object is attached to its Forge object, then clients will not only see the changes applied to it, but they can also forge the object and see the object get forged. However, if the object is detached, then they will only see its position at the start of the round, and won't see it get forged at all, even if it's reattached later in the round. Now, you might just think to leave all the objects attached at all times then, but if you do this and restart the round, the objects will delete themselves for clients and won't reappear until the round after. And when they do reappear, there's no guarantee that the code will actually apply to them, because there seems to be some sort of anomaly where it spawns in later than it actually should. Another thing worth noting is that clients will see the scaled version of the object at the start of the round, but if the object gets scaled again during the round, they will not see that until the round restarts once again. So those are the current limitations with object by index and forge. I know they aren't the best things to work around, but it is what it is. Like I mentioned earlier, you should download the latest version of every game type in order to get the bug fixes, especially for the network fixes for clients. Now, with all that out of the way, let's talk about how to use the features of the game type in more detail for those who have never used a game type mod before. In order to access most of the features of the mod, you have to go into an object's properties, go to advanced, and you'll be presented with the game type label and the spawn sequence. As shown on screen, altering the spawn sequence will produce different effects depending on the game label. For scale, it will increase or decrease the scale of the object, while spawner causes different objects to spawn. The game type labels are set up so that spawn sequence 0 does nothing, so you can cycle through each game type label without triggering them. Changing the spawn sequence from there will activate the label and do the appropriate feature of that label and spawn sequence combination. So it's a good practice to set the label first and then alter the spawn sequence. The sole exception to this is object by index, where you want to set the spawn sequence first, then change the label. It's for this reason that object by index is the first label when scrolling to the left so you can easily set the spawn sequence under no label, and then change to object by index. You may also find additional options when changing the object's team. For example, pink team will make any object invincible.
Yellow team will cause any object under the scale label to stop scaling. While red team will detach map objects from their forge bases for object by index. Now, many of you have been asking how to spawn certain objects. For example, the Saber on Countdown, the Cruisers on Highlands, the Corvette and Frigate on Condemned, and I don't know all the spawn sequences offhand, but I do know how you can figure them out very easily. Just set the object to Red Team, and cycle through the spawn sequences. As long as you don't do it too quickly, the objects will become immediately detached upon being attached to the base object, so you can use this to find the object you want, and then reattach it using Neutral Team. Another thing I want to mention is scaling map objects. In order to scale map objects, you need to use a hill marker with the scale label to create a scale zone, and scale them that way. You can do this in Forge when the object is attached, and even if it detaches in custom games, it will still scale down properly. It's also worth noting that removing or scaling up the skybox will look fine on PC, but as you can see here on Xbox, it creates a very broken looking sky. Another feature is attaching objects to other bases with specific orientations. As you know, when the object attaches to the object by index forge base object, it copies its orientation because that's what it has to do. This can create the unfortunate situation where, for example, this Banshee and this Cruiser are badly misaligned. If you want the Cruiser to be aligned as so, so that actually is in line with the Banshee, what you should do is set the Banshee as an attached base, give it a zone, give it a negative spawn sequence, and align the objects as so. This method should work with any objects, so you can orientate map objects as desired on movable pieces such as vehicles or weapons. With that said, I want to touch up briefly on attach base and attachment. Some players expressed confusion when it came to attaching, and also inconsistencies when it came to vehicle attaching, so allow me to explain. When it comes to attaching, any attachment will always attach to the center point of the base object. It will also attach based on its own center point, so it's always center point to center point. However, the attachment always retains its orientation, so you can position them appropriately with the correct rotation and achieve different results, even with the same object. I think part of the problem is that the attaching scripts go off immediately in Forge when there's a matching spawn sequence between a base and attachment. I'm thinking of changing this in the future to where you have to hit a switch in order for attaching to occur. That way, you can forge what you want, and then see the results. As for vehicle attachments, I've heard some complaints that sometimes vehicles won't attach properly, or won't attach at all. If you restart the round, however, vehicles should attach properly at the start of the round. This is another reason why I want to change how attaching works to where you have to flip a switch in order for the code to take effect. This way, vehicle attaching will become consistent in Forge. For now though, the only solution I can offer is to restart the round so the vehicle attachments work properly. For Spawner, I had forgotten to mention the features for spawn sequences negative 8 and negative 9. These two spawn sequences activate an invincibility zone and invincibility zone respectively. This works on any object on the map, including players. Speaking of object by index, I should better explain how it works so that there is no more confusion. So I'm going to give a longer and more technical description of how object by index works and give some tips as to how you can best utilize it. Now, despite the name, Object by Index does not use any pre-existing index in the map file or anything like that. Rather, it creates its own index at runtime, or kind of. The code behind it involves two numbers. One number, which represents the spawn sequence of the forge object itself, and another number which simply counts up one for every object. Now, when using a for each object loop, it goes in an exact order based on the spawn order of the objects at that moment on the map. Now, this is fine when the object you want to grab spawns early on. For example, the skybox is the first object to spawn, so it will never be altered by any objects that get deleted 
or otherwise don't spawn on the map due to being game type specific, for example. However, objects that spawn in later and on certain maps do have issues. For example, Boneyard has a number of game specific objects, so many in fact that it makes it really difficult to use object by index on Boneyard effectively because for most game types, it won't actually spawn the proper object in custom games. And so the result is that you get a completely different object than what you were expecting because the object you were expecting isn't even on the map. Here's a visual of what I mean. So let's say we have this line of objects right here. Here's a set of map objects, here's some forge objects, and here's some more map objects. If I want to target the first set of map objects, no problem. Since they spawned first, then they would be altered by any objects disappearing. However, if I want to target the second group, I have to make sure that all the forge objects in between them stay the same throughout the game, which may or may not be true if any of these objects are game type specific. If this is not true, then the result is that the object has a different index value than we expect, and so the forge object assigned to it doesn't spawn the correct object. Now, I'd like to go over a few miscellaneous things that players were having trouble with, or otherwise had questions about. Some players said they were having trouble deleting the old Forge game type from their files. You can do this, but you have to go manually into your files and delete it from there, as the option doesn't exist in the Forge menu, and the game type isn't present in the Custom Games menu due to being a Forge game type. I've had many players request if I could somehow add the ability for Collision to scale up alongside the model. Unfortunately, I can't do this. I did investigate this, because you can do it with certain map objects, but as it turns out, this is only due to the object lacking its own Collision model, so the engine simply compensates by using the model you can see as the Collision model. With the speed of which I updated to version 1.05, some of you may think that updates are going to be quite frequent on this mod. Sadly, this isn't the case. I only updated so quickly because of the critical bug fixes that were present in the update. Thank you all who have stuck around to the end of the video, and if you want extra help, I highly recommend joining the Anvil server, where we have tons of help threads who have already helped a number of people with the tool. Link is in the description below. And for my returning subscribers, expect more Halo Reach scripting content in the future, although this time, I'll be doing a lot more proof of concepts and demonstrations with some code, as opposed to big mods like this. Additionally, I haven't stopped the wacky videos. I have been playing Oblivion lately, so stick around for that. This is your favorite Toilet Man Weesey, signing off.